He talks tough because he's weak, because he's afraid. He's just a loser. I really think he should be taking credit for it being morning in America because it's freaking morning in America. Welcome to Political Experts React, where we break down political ads and media, explain what the people behind them are trying to accomplish, and decide whether or not they did a good job. I'm Dan Pfeiffer, former communications director to President Barack Obama, and joining me today is editor of The Bulwark and co-host of the Next Level podcast, Jonathan Last. Jonathan Last, welcome back to Political Experts React. How are you doing? It's great to be here, man. I can't believe that it's Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. Who could ever have <laughs> predicted that? I was going to say, I know how enthusiastic you are at the prospect of this race happening again. Look, I'm the last person in America, maybe the only person in America who isn't named Jill. <laughs> who thinks that Joe Biden has been the best president of his lifetime. And believe me, nobody's more surprised than I am. You know, like I didn't enter this as the world's biggest Biden stand. I mean, he has obviously done a great job. And now that the general election is here, he is officially the nominee. Donald Trump is officially the nominee. They have secured the delegates. It's time for Joe Biden to start making that case and Trump making the case against it. We're going to start with an ad from MAGA Inc., which is a pro-Trump super PAC that goes after Joe Biden on his age. I guess I should clear my mind here a little bit. We can all see Joe Biden's weakness. If Biden wins, can he even survive till 2029? The real question is, can we make America Great Again Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising? MAGA Inc. put out this ad the morning of Joe Biden's State of the Union. They put it on Morning Joe, which is reportedly Joe Biden's favorite television program. Although I would suspect that unlike Donald Trump, Joe Biden was probably not watching cable television on the morning of a State of the Union. He probably had other things to do. But what do you think about this ad? It's sort of in line with how Trump and pro-Trump allies talk about Joe Biden's age. I think it's a great ad. First of all, it's not trying to persuade people of something they don't already believe. It's taking something that some huge percentage of the country, both Republicans, Democrats, and independents, are already concerned about. They've said so in survey after survey, and it puts very effective video on that. And so what it is doing is it is validating pre-existing concerns of voters. Trump is also extremely old. But the idea is, like, Trump is this crazed loon howling at the moon. You could categorize it as strong because like well i don't know like he is yelling at the moon right it, it feels like some weird version of vigor i don't know the only weakness with this ad is that it can be answered and it can be answered by biden in his public appearances you know they they go and put this on morning joe the morning of the state of the union and then Biden comes out and crushes the State of the Union. That's a problem for the ad. It worries me because it goes at weakness, right? And when you say Joe Biden is senile or has dementia or Barack Obama or Jill Biden or Kamala Harris is really running the White House because he is mentally incompetent, that's not believable to a lot of people. But that an old person isn't strong enough to protect you from the chaos we see, that is believable. The part where I go is a little bit too far is you probably did need to have to predict Joe Biden's death in 365 days. Right? It's just like that part was, I think, a little rich. But I know why they did it, because they believe that Kamala Harris is a weakness for Biden. Yeah, you got to have the African-American lady in there to, yeah. to really hammer home the value proposition of, of MAGA, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah exactly. Uh, it's, there's a little, I always got to throw something, a little something, for, a little red meat for the base in there, and that's what that was. How people decide that the almost 80-year-old guy who dyes his hair and puts on five pounds of pancake and bronzer every day is strong, I don't get it, but they do. They buy it. Trump does understand that strength is the axis upon which American politics operates. And the Biden folks, and we'll get to their ad in a sec, have begun to paint Trump as weak. This is a mistake Democrats make all the time is, he's a dictator, he's going to do all these things. And by doing that, we're often reinforcing the idea that he's strong. And you've seen Biden likes to call Trump a loser now, which is a way to try to... Oh, to so important. Yes, to make him seem weak, right? It goes at the big line everything, but it's just... He's just a loser. He does these things. He talks tough because he's weak, because he's afraid. He bows down to dictators, not because he's a dictator, but because he's scared of them. You want to expose a wannabe strongman as weak as opposed to making the voters fear their strength, right? That's the easier thing to do. I couldn't agree more. All right, people. It's been a while since my producers have forced me to do this, but the general election is here. And politics in 2024 is information warfare. The right has... Fox News, The Daily Wire, disinformation and propaganda outlets pushing their message every day. But one simple thing you can do is subscribe to the Pod Save America YouTube channel. 
The more people who subscribe to it, the more YouTube will show our pro-democracy, fact-based content to people all across the political spectrum. Just click the subscribe button. It costs you no money. It helps the effort to get the message out to fight back against Donald Trump, the MAGA media, and everyone else. So please do it. It's a simple, simple thing. Usually I resist this ask, but this is I'm dead serious about this. It's an incredibly important thing you can do to help. The next ad is the first ad the Biden campaign launched this year. It came right after the State of the Union. It takes the age issue on directly. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. I led the country through the COVID crisis. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world. I passed a law that lowers prescription drug prices. Caps insulin at $35 a month for seniors. For four years, Donald Trump tried to pass an infrastructure law, and he failed. I got it done. Now we're rebuilding America. I passed the biggest law in history to combat climate change because our future depends on it. Donald Trump took away the freedom of women to choose. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald Trump believes the job of the president is to take care of Donald Trump. I believe the job of the president is to fight for you, the American people, and that's what I'm doing. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Can we do one more take? Look, I'm very young, energetic, and handsome. What the hell am I doing this for? What do you think? Good stuff. The thing that I've been yelling about over the bulwark for like a year now is that Biden needs to attack the age thing and needs to hang a lantern on it and joke about it and treat it like exposure therapy. He takes all of the stuff that he is on really, really popular ground on infrastructure, COVID, prescription drug prices, jobs, climate change. He's taking credit for it. Because he actually has things he passed, right? This is when I said he's been the most successful first-term president since Reagan. He passed a ton of legislation that was broadly popular. He wasn't riding Democratic hobby horses. And then he positions on abortion in a way that I think is very, very smart. Roe has become, in retrospect, incredibly popular. And so instead of getting into the weeds on like what sort of weeks or what sort of exceptions, he just says, I want to make Roe the law of the land. This is the sweet spot for him. Part of what Biden has to do is turn this into a referendum on Trump. But I really think he should be taking credit for it being morning in America because it's freaking morning in America. Right. I mean, unemployment is three point six percent. You know, GDP growth keeps going up. We got the soft landing that no other industrialized nation did post COVID. Biden ought to be taking credit for that. I love this ad. I love the takes on the age issue. I love that it has Biden to camera talking. A lot of people who watch the State of the Union have not seen Joe Biden speak for more than 45 seconds in three years. Unless you actively seek out political content now, you're not going to get any. And the ones you are going to get is most likely out of context, TikToks and Instagram reels, usually from people who aren't for Biden that make him look not good. And so more Biden speaking, right? Because it's reassuring to people, right? And it runs against the image we saw in that previous ad. I love in this ad how the way he does the infrastructure bill is most important is that he succeeded, Trump failed. That's one of the best issues, right? He succeeded where Trump failed. And then he said, and this is, I think, the best case against Trump, is that Trump's only in it for himself. He wants to protect himself from legal accountability. He wants to help his rich friends and punish his enemies. That's why he's running for president. Because that is the most true thing that people understand about the man. And the last part at the end is great because this is a thing where I think a lot of Democrats and the Biden White House to a certain extent had struggled up until recently is – getting people to pay attention to what they're saying. Like Biden's often saying all the right things, right? He has that message that you like, but no one ever hears it because you're not doing it in a way that breaks through. And so just adding that little bit of virality to the end of the ad makes it more shareable, right? More people are going to post it. More people are going to think it's funny. More people are going to see it. And so just the whole thing was just, a, I was so excited when I saw it. It's definitely the best Biden ad I've seen this cycle. And it's just one of the best ads I've seen recently, hands down, just a great piece of work. People are concerned that Biden is old, but they don't dislike him. And so when you have a likable candidate, you want to let him be likable in your ads. This is another thing. Look, this is very, very small and opticky, but he ought to be in a Navy quarter zip all the damn time. It looks dignified because of his age, but it sort of makes him feel a little more casual and, and active. Do, do more of that wardrobe. I cannot recommend anything more than the one product I use every time I drink. Zbiotics. Zbiotics is a pre-alcohol probiotic drink and the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, 
not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Seabiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember, and I cannot emphasize this enough, make Zbiotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly, and you'll feel your best tomorrow. All right, people, the 2024 election is here. I know you've been dreading it for, I don't know, four years now. But the fact that we're gonna spend every single day looking at the polls, worrying about who's gonna win, means that many of you, myself included, are probably gonna to try to soften the edges with a little drinking. Maybe a glass of wine, a beer, a cocktail. Go to zbiotics.com slash experts to get 15% off your first order when you use experts at checkout. Zbiotics is back with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, and I can't imagine what that would be, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Thanks to Zbiotics for sponsoring this video. All right, the last ad we're gonna watch is from Republican Voters Against Trump, a group very close to your heart. Let's take a look. I'm a former Trump voter. I voted for Donald Trump in 2016 and 2020. In 2020, I voted for Trump again. I will never support Donald Trump. I will not vote for him in 2024. He's got so much baggage. Trump is the biggest threat to our democracy. He kept denying. And he lost the election. Donald Trump was responsible for the violence on January 6th. He could have prevented it. Trump talking about retribution. The retribution and going after people is disrespect of our military. The military people that he's disgraced. 91. 91. One. Criminal felonies. Four different indictments. He mishandled classified documents. Taking documents. Now his desire to do away with NATO. Donald Trump talks about abandoning Ukraine. He said he'll be a dictator on day one. If he's going to be a dictator on day one, he's going to be a dictator, period. That kind of stuff scares me. Absolutely scares me. A second Trump term would be worse than the first. A second term for Trump would be far more extreme. It is dangerous, outright dangerous. I cannot support Donald Trump again. I'd never vote for him again. He'll never get my vote, ever ever. What's your take on this ad? For purposes of disclosure, my Bulwark colleague, Sarah Longwell, is behind the group Republican Voters Against Trump. I am friends with the guy who actually cut the ad. I think this ad and this entire campaign is deeply, deeply important. The election is basically going to be decided by Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. And a lot of it is going to be about peeling off marginal Republican or Trump voters either to vote for Biden or to stay home and not come out for Trump. And what Sarah's group has found is that doing the, the Lincoln Project, you know, viral hit, like, can't you believe Donald Trump has blown up America stuff? Doesn't do much with those people. But these testimonials do. Now, there's, there's some reasons for this, I think. The first of which is how raw it is from bad camera angles and fumbling for words. And most importantly, these are people who voted for Trump at least once. I just think it's powerful to show these people to potential voters in those key states, people who look like them, people who think like them, people who have voted the same way they have, and let them know that like there's a whole tribe out there of people like you. Like, you're not a freak alone on an island. I love this ad campaign. I loved it in 2020 when I first started paying close attention to it. I think it is the future of political ads. It understands several key truths about American politics. One is people don't trust politicians or the media or even really most political ads, especially the ads that start with the candidate saying, I am so-and-so and I approve this message. What you're really saying is it is okay to go pee right now in the middle of your TV program, right? So you do not yeah. need to watch what comes next. Yeah. People's political identity is the most important identity. And so having someone who you believe is from your tribe, thinks like you, knows your life, matters a lot. And the last thing is the authenticity of this. This is how so many people communicate. This looks like a FaceTime from a friend. And what I really love about this is it's not just this version of this ad. If you go to the Republican Voters Against Trump website, you can get these videos and just share the individual videos with people. More and more of this sort of stuff, I think, is the future, especially as younger voters opt out of television as we know it. Their television is TikTok, right? That's how they right. seek entertainment. So you need content that looks like that. One of my pet theories is that Trump's soft underbelly is whether or not he won in 2020 or not. Republicans who think that Trump actually lost don't want to vote for him. If you focus on the fact that he actually lost, this reinforces the he's on his own side, not on your side. That means Trump is telling you that your eyes are lying and that you don't know what you're talking about and that he himself is the real big winner. He's going to keep saying that he won. He's going to keep insisting I mean, he has to for legal reasons, but... 
But all of this is like it's like a scab that he won't be able to stop picking at, which is, again, taking us back to the Biden ad is the loser thing. Just hammering the idea that this guy is a loser who lost in 2020 and is being a sore loser again. And I think that is really one of the keys to prying away that marginal Trump support and taking those people who are Haley voters, people who might come out or might stay home or might go to Biden and prying them away from Trump. Just forcing Donald Trump to talk about the big lie every day for months would be a huge benefit. And and if he's not going to talk about it, we should try to force him to talk about it, right? Like prompt him on it, it go after hard. him on it, run ads. Exactly. Like he, he <laughs> will do hard it. to get inside um, yeah. his ad. Yeah. Yeah. But we got to make sure that when he talks about it, people hear it, all that matters is we have this guy who is running to take an office that he tried to steal through violent means based on a lie four years ago. And that is the crux of the election. And with that, Jonathan Last, thank you for joining us. Subscribe to The Bulwark. Great content. Listen to all their podcasts. Subscribe to their YouTube channel where you get a bunch of great stuff. And thanks for being on Political Experts React again. Anytime, Dan. Thanks for watching these ads and videos with us. If you have anything you'd like us to break down, let us know in the comments. See you all next time.